Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. Thank you to all the creatures that have joined us online and here in the building. My name is Karen Belita. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm your service leader this morning, and we are joined by our minister, Reverend Rosemary Morrison. As we begin this special time together, I invite you to quiet your devices, but not necessarily your pets and yourselves so we can enjoy our service further. For those who are hearing impaired, the ushers have audio aids available. I'd like to share with you some of my favorite welcoming words by Reverend John Higgins. Welcome to this place. This is a home where no revealed truths are promoted and no scripture or human being accepted as infallible. This is a place searching for truth. But we are believers. We believe in intellectual freedom. We believe in justice. We believe in compassion and concern for each other and the whole world. We believe in commitment to those ideals which make us caring and active in the struggles for human dignity. We are Unitarian Universalists. In accordance with our principles, including our eighth principle, which I hope you noticed is up on our welcome wall at the front entrance. Our eighth principle being individual and communal action that accountably dismantles racism and systematic barriers to full inclusion in ourselves and our institutions. We acknowledge that we are on Treaty 6 territory. June is National Indigenous History Month. In honor of this, I'm grateful to be able to read the following words by Reverend Sean Neil Barron, a Unitarian Universalist born on Treaty 7 land. We gather together as a community of seekers to honor the interdependence of life, to respect the dignity of all, and to honor the land we walk humbly upon. Friends, let us acknowledge that we walk upon the traditional territories of the First Peoples of Canada, the original nations of this land, who continue to cry out for justice and self-determination. We are blessed with the space and an opportunity to strive to live out our common principles, to bring justice, equity, and compassion into our daily lives, to resist all that threatens the earth and her people, and to live out our dream of a world community of peace, liberty, and justice for all. Let these thoughts carry us forth as we journey and worship together blessed be. May we be reminded here of our highest aspirations and inspired to bring our gifts of love and service to the altar of humanity. May we know once again that we are not isolated beings, but we are connected to the universe, to this community, and to each other. Does anybody have announcements? I have a couple ready. Well, one is, as you know, or many of you know, UCE is a sponsor of a monthly all-ages drag show. In May, they raised over $1,900 for an animal rescue, which I have a feeling is near and dear to a lot of our hearts. Next weekend, the Dragging Youth Series will have their pride show, Born This Way. It's on Saturday, June, or when is it? <laughs> Let me look. Saturday, Saturday June 11th. The doors are at 5.30, the show is at 6, and there's a youth dance to follow. All of the money raised will be going to the next queer prom. Another announcement is that for Sunday morning, Sunday morning only, there's parking on the south side of the fence at the printers. So if you need extra parking, there's parking there. As we know, our community extends beyond the Sunday morning gathering. We have a monthly newsletter available online, and you can join our virtual community on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to keep up to date on what's happening in our extended community. We are glad to have you with us this morning. We hope you find something in the service today that nourishes your spirit and helps you find and keep your balance. We open the service now with a musical prelude, offering each of us a time of quiet contemplation or a time to scratch.
or chalice lighting. I believe Allura was said that she would do us the honor of lighting our chalice. The Calling of the Creatures by Ian Riddell. Come hoof and trunk and tail and horn and paw and wing and claw. Come bird and reptile, mammal born, all full of nature's law. Bring bark and crow and rabbit too, and silent stare and hiss. Bring purr and trill and war warble too, and no voice, no ear can miss. We gather here, each life and all, to celebrate and sing, to honor creatures large and small, our love to them we bring. I now welcome you to stand as you are willing and able and join us in singing, All Critters Got a Place in the Choir. The words should appear on the screen for everyone to sing to or howl to. wider community. One half of all the unidentified cash that is received is given to an outside organization. The charity for June is the George Spady Society. The George Spady Center Society is recognized as a leader in the develop development 
and delivery of effective services for the care, treatment, and support of individuals with substance-related disorders and dual diagnosis. To find out more, please visit gspady.org. For those in the sanctuary, you can use the offering plate at the main exit to the sanctuary. To donate online, you can visit us at uce.ca. We thank you for your generosity and your support. With our time, our talents, and our money, we support the work of the community and this Unitarian Universalist tradition. Let us join in singing from You Are Received. Well, isn't this fun? I assure you, if you are a visitor, it's not always like this. But I would like to say that it's probably more fun today than any other day. So that's good. This is going to turn on that mic too. So the next song we're going to sing is called um, We Love the Flowers. The music is by Ron Klusmeyer, a United Church hymn writer and the words by Walter Farquharson, but I've changed them quite a bit to be more in line with this service and with our tradition um, of Unitarian Universalism. Um, Gordon played it during the prelude, and maybe, Gordon, would you like to play it once through again? Maybe just, because um, it is completely unfamiliar. Not only do we have dogs and cats and bunnies and things, we're going to sing a song we've never sung before. What can go wrong? Thank you. That's a pretty little song, isn't it? So I see some unfamiliar faces. Thank you for being with us here this morning. My name is the Reverend Rosemary Morrison, and it is my honor to serve this congregation, the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. Normally at this time, I would do a, kind of a lengthy, embodied meditation kind of thing. Well, we're not going to do that. It's kind of a little bit, um, no, it's not possible, Maria. It's just not possible. 
But, but you know what? I think we still would enjoy lighting a candle or two. So I invite you, if you wish to, try to get through the maze of dogs and cats and bunnies and uh, line up on this side. I think Declan might need to move a little bit so you can get through with that lovely dog. And then um, you light, take a candle and light it and then light a um, tea light. So there's, is anybody, is there anyone here that's your first time here today? Got some people, so what you do is um, you come here, if you want to light a candle for maybe something that's in your heart, a joy or something, and you come and you take a candle and you light this one, and then you can light this one. You have to start on this side, my dear. Those ones are going to be wet. You see, and then you dunk it because we don't blow on things because of COVID. And then we put it in here. Okay. So if anyone would like to light a candle of joy or concern of, jo of whatever is on your heart and mind, I invite you to do so now. Bring your pets with you if you like, or you can bring them to me. I'll hold on to them, whichever you prefer. Thank you. Somebody was just died up there. No, Denali. Somebody just died on Denali trying to summit. tradition today. I'm going to read out the, um, from here, yeah, keep playing, Gordon. A candle in memory of my furry niece and the horses, Troy, Memphis, and Fancy. I think that, can you bring it down, please? Oh, boy. My dog, Willow, my cats, Nos and Essence, Stella, has a cat named Bibby. A candle in memory of my furry niece, Moo Moo Cow. Uh, from Maida, I would like to add our cats, Ginger and Vanilla, the dogs Zoe and Troy, and the horses Memphis and Fancy. I intend on getting out there to meet Maida's horses. She has a Tennessee walking horse. That's exciting. Candle wishing my mother-in-law a happy 80th today. Thank you, Brandy. Rosemary Falconer, my cat, Missy. And Zoe says her cat might have pancreatic cancer. I light a virtual candle in remembrance of Taffy Cat from Beth, who died unexpectedly in August. You can just stop, pop that in the water, honey. Yeah, okay, good. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you, Everest.
from Elaine, remembering my dog Sam, who give, gave me wonderful memories. It's Elaine Renard. Thank you, Elaine. Thanks, Owen. It's okay. Wow, that was really fun. Um, maybe not as reverent and um, uh, mind meditation like as it often is, but way more fun. I wish we could bring our pets every Sunday. So speaking, but don't. <laughs> that was actually not true. <laughs> I love animals a lot, um, you may have noticed, uh, but um, no, I don't want them here every Sunday. We're going to clean the carpets and then that's it. You can't bring them again until next year. I'm kidding. Oh, you can bring them in, of course, but not to church. And I'm just digging a little hole and I hope going down it. So um, next up is a blessing of our pets. So you have brought your pets to be blessed. And am I not supposed to be here? Are you? Good. <laughs> and believe it or not, uh, I purchased holy water. This water is from the Jordan River in Israel. Whatever your beliefs, someone thought this was special. And so I think it's special. Um, I'm an agnostic. I'm not thinking that this has got any special powers or anything like that. But it is a little bit special, isn't it? I will touch your pet, if you wish, with this water from the Jordan River and bless it. Who would like to start? Declan, if you'd like to introduce your pet. Where can I put this? <laughs> oh, hang on. It's there we go. This is Joey the frog, who has recently become a part of our family. Oh, is this okay? Yeah. Okay. This is Joey the frog. He has recently become a part of our extended family as he is uh, my stepfather's dog, and he is very friendly, so this will be his first time being blessed here. I want this. Tell me his name again. Joey. Joey. Joey, you are a blessing to this family and to all of us. May you be loved. May you not pee on the carpet. <laughs> yes, you are so cute. Who is next? Bunnies. <laughs> Let's. Can you introduce your pet, please? This is Gemma. Gemma is a near labiador. Unwrap it so you can see it. Belly and all. She's almost five. And so this is like the size that she gets. And it's full of dandelions. <laughs> Gemma, you are such a blessing. May you live a long and happy life and eat many carrots. Thank you for being here. I like it when you see bunnies and carrots together. And ruffles. <laughs> Would you like to introduce your pet, Mark? And yourself. I'm Mark. This is Ruffles. She's 
two years old. Uh, she's in Sue and Dash on Cross. And I'll pick her up. Ruffles, you are a blessing to your family and to all of us here. May you have a long and happy life with Mark. Oh, another Mark. <laughs> Introduce yourself first. Hi, Mark. This is Nugget. And she's just a puppy and has about four times as much energy as I do. <laughs> <laughs> Nugget, may you be blessed and may you be a blessing to Mark for many, many days. And don't be so hard on her. Settle down. <laughs> Scott, who have we got? Did you want to come up too? <laughs> I'm Scott Harrison, and this is Voodoo. This is his 14th blessing of the pets. And dark one here is Bumblebee, and this is her first. Do you want to bring them up? And yeah, I don't want to. Have to... Bumblebee? And voodoo, you are blessed and you have been such a blessing to this family. May you continue to have a long and happy life together. Isn't there a third somewhere? Do you have three dogs? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Don't forget to introduce yourself to you. uh, this is luna she'll be two years old in july and we will have had her for two years in september and what's she your... was one of the one of the dogs that people got in 2000 because of covid and uh, she's been a blessing to our family luna and what is your do you want to tell the people your name too my name is louise swift luna May you be blessed and have a long life and have happiness and may you never get lost. She's done that one. <laughs> Go and line up. Hi, I'm Marilyn and this is Tess and I won't pick her up to show her <laughs> because she weighs about 90 pounds. Uh, we got her as rescue as a five-year-old now she's 13 and i thought she was mostly yellow lab she has a lab personality but everyone i meet on the street and even the vet thinks that she's part great pyrenees yep i would say um, so she has a lot of health challenges these days but with uh tender loving care and holistic medicine uh and even some arnica pellets tucked under her lip <laughs> uh, i think that she's going to pull through for more Pet blessings. <laughs> hey, Tess. May you be blessed. May you be pain free. May you continue to have a happy life with Marilyn and Jim. And if you hear her bark, she's saying hello. In all the years I've had her, I've never seen her growl or bare her teeth, but she barks a lot. This is Gidget, I'm Yvonne Mira. This is Gidget, her middle name I've decided is Velcro. <laughs> She's a real cuddle bug. She's my fourth dachshund. And uh, different again than all of the other three. She loves her vegetables. She has <laughs> to have three little mini carrots every night before bed. There, are, somebody eats carrots. <laughs> <laughs> and she loves going for long walks. 
Gidget. He's such a blessing. May you have many long walks with Yvonne and be very happy in the woods. <laughs> uh, we're not too sure over there. Uh, oh, Joey was just saying hi, I think, but oh, we don't have another. Go ahead, introduce yourself. I'm Kim, and this is Louise. And they say you don't get the dog you, you want, you get the dog you need. And for some reason, the universe decided that I need a really nice dog. <laughs> <laughs> Louise, you are a blessing, and may you continue to be nice and teach the rest of the, us how to be nice. And I know you're already nice, Kim. <laughs> Oh, another bunny, yay. It's a guinea pig, oh. <laughs> Oops. This is Pistachio, he's um, very interested to be here. Uh, he's a bit mean. And could you say your name too, please? Uh, my name is AJ. Pistachio, may you be blessed, may you be safe, May you never be scared about with cats. May they never scare you. I know that you're scared of kitty cats, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> I have a cat who is afraid enough of the box that moves that when she hears an alarm go off in the building, she hides under the bed. So I did not bring her. I did print a picture of her, which of course I left on the printer. But this is this is my girl. Her name is Tika Masala because she looks like a spice blend. <laughs> and I absolutely adore her. A dry finger. <laughs> Tika Masala is blessed. Is there any other animals that are in the building that would like to be blessed that you would like to bring forward and introduce to everyone? But yeah, just give us a minute. I'm going to get to animals that aren't here in just a sec. Is there anybody? That's okay. That's okay. I didn't, I didn't give those instructions. Do you want to bring your animal up, Will? Okay. I will not do that. Beautiful dog. Oh. So I'm Will, and everybody knows David as well, and, and this is our dog. We've had him for just about a year now, and his name's Arlo. He's 100% wine. Arlo, you are a blessing to this world. May you continue to do all the things that Arlo does so enthusiastically. Everything, Everything is enthusiastic. Uh, is Arlo a sight hound? Uh, he, he's a... Uh, he was bred in Germany for to hunt bear and boar. Yeah, you can and, tell he's on the lookout yeah. pretty much all the time. Yeah. Arlo is a blessing, and we're so glad he's here. Thank you for bringing him, and I'll I'll just do this here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, one more live pet. Um, also, if there are pets on Zoom, would you like to bring up gallery view? If there's anybody on Zoom that would like us to see their pet, um, if that's possible, I know I'm springing that on you, tech crew. Hi, please introduce. Hi, I'm Grant, and this is Harley. Harley. He's now a teenager, he's 15, and uh, he's been through this quite a few times and looks forward to it. Harley. You are a blessing. I don't have food. He would prefer it if oh, I had yeah. a treat. He's good at treats. <laughs> <laughs> and I meant to have treats he, in my pockets. He still walks a couple of times a day, half a mile a lot of the time. I ride my scooter. He's, he's right there. I'm so glad you have Harley. What a blessing he has been to you. Now, I'd like to bless all of the pets that you have in your on your phones, on your pictures. Yeah, and then I'm going to get to the Zoom. I know you're there, only if I turn my back, you can't see me. Okay. Audrey, you had a pet that you wanted to bring. 
Just a sec. Don't please. They, people can't hear you. Come bring them. Come and tell tell us about your pet. My name's Audrey, and I'm wearing my pets because there's no way you could catch them. They know two days ago that I wanted to bring him here, and there was no way they. We had three people after them, including my guests from the Ukraine. So this is them, Stevie. I mean, um, Ginger and Princess. And folks on Zoom, thank you for showing us your pets. May they be a blessing to you. I, I want to look at you. So you're seeing the back of my head and I apologize, but may your pets be a blessing to you and as they are to us. Uh, may you enjoy them and have fun with them and may they be companions for your life and your heart. Thank you everyone for bringing your animals either in the sanctuary or on Zoom. Really appreciate it. It makes it such a to, you know, it, to have those animals that are part of our lives come into our midst, because we are more than just people. We, we, there's so many facets to all of them. And now we're going to do a, a, a pet blessing that responds to the pet blessing. The words will come up, uh, the response, and Karen will lead us through that. the world alive and aloud with the presence of creatures and critters, animals abound, interwo interwoven in our human lives, and wholly in independent. In independent. <laughs> this, is inter this is the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. We give thanks for animal companionship in our lives and on this earth. Some of us have known animals who have saved our very lives. Sometimes this is a metaphor, sometimes it is a literal fact. For so many of us, we are better human animals because we have known animals as part of our story. We give thanks for animal companionship in our lives and on this earth. Animals are not only cuddly and cute, companions of solace and delight, Animals are deeply wild, with the capacity to defend and to kill, even the ones who have pronounced, who have, we have pronounced tamed. Let us always show, show forms of proper respect for this wild way. We give thanks for animal companionship in our lives and on this earth. There is the painful reality that some animals suffer needlessly at our hands. There are animals who encounter human cruelty, left hungry or maltreated, used for mean-spirited profit, habitat stolen and built upon without regard for our shared mutual existence. Let us do what we can to be able to give thanks for animals without hypocrisy or heartless dominance. We give thanks for animal companionship in our lives and on this earth. There are animals in our daily lives who labor makes our own lives easier, safer, more accessible. Animals who lend us their fur or hair or feathers or fleece or milk or eggs that we might be sustained without their loss of life. Animals who we raise or hunt may it always be compassionately and respect for the wider web, though we know this is mostly not the case whose lives are sacrificed that some of us eat or cover our bodies. May we move ever closer to that ideal to live lightly on the earth, taking only what we must and no more. We give thanks for animal companionship in our lives and on this earth. All together, we bless all animals. That didn't get up. Sorry, what? That didn't get up, so maybe just read it. All right, we bless all animals. We bless those we know and love. We bless those unknown, unknown to us who have benefited our lives. Oh, there we, go. we bless even, even the, the ones, ones that, that can, can harm, harm us. us. 
affirming with humility their place in the interdependent web. We affirm the impulse for humans to live in right relation with all other animals on this earth. May we honor our best presence as part of the animal family. Oh, interestingly, I had a little um, sermon to go before the animal blessing. I'm just going to read a little bit of it. I got carried away. <laughs> I want to read a poem by Mary Oliver called uh, Conversations. Said Bear, that's her dog. I know I'm supposed to keep an eye on you, but it's difficult the way you lag behind and keep talking to people. Well, how can you be keeping your eye on me when you're half a mile ahead? True, said Bear, the dog, but I'm thinking of you all the time. Mary says, I had to go away for a few days, so I called the kennel and made an appointment. I guess Bear overheard the conversation. Love and company, said Bear, are the adornments that change everything. I know they'll be nice to me, but I'm sad, sad, sad. And then pitifully wrung his paws. I canceled my trip. And now a couple of, you remember those commercials? I don't know if they're still on because I don't have a television. You know, the, the Dear Diary, the, the kind of grumpy, bored cat Dear Diary commercials. So I'm going to read a couple of those. Day 752. My captors continue to taunt me with bizarre little dangling things. They dine lavishly on fresh meat while I am forced to eat dry cereal. The only thing that keeps me going is the hope of escape and the mild satisfaction I get from ruin, ruining the occasional piece of furniture. Tomorrow, I will eat another house plant. Day 774. I am convinced the other captives are flunkies and maybe snitches. The dog is routinely released and seems more than happy to return. He is obviously a half-wit. The bird, on the other hand, has got to be an informant. He has mastered their frightful tongue and speaks with them regularly. I am certain he reports my every move. Due to his current placement in the metal room, his safety is assured. But I can wait. It's only a matter of time. Day 780. I got messed up on catnip last night. <laughs> At the height of it all, I had a vision, a hallucinogenic revelation. They are the prisoners, and I am their captor. Why have I not seen all of this before? So when I went into seminary in August of 2014, I was the prisoner of a cat named Oscar a grand dog named Joy who was a rescued greyhound. And I would look after her because she had separation anxiety. So they would walk her to my house and then pick her up after work. And I also had a bearded dragon named Gia. I know I don't seem like the obvious choice for owning a beardy. However, I've actually owned two. And it surprised me to no end that I could love a lizard as much as I did. Beardies are not like other pets. They can't keep themselves warm. They need special handling and equipment and, and their food. Well, their food is often alive when they eat it. One time the crickets escaped and lived in hidden places in my house for a long, long time. I was raised on a farm. We always had a dog that wasn't allowed in the house, and we had barn cats. 
We had a dairy farm and then later switched out to mixed farming. I had a pet cow once, a Swiss brown. She let me ride her. It took me a long time actually to learn how to care for animal companions. I certainly didn't learn on the farm. My father was not a pet person, let's just say that. So when I went to seminary, I rehomed Oscar, which was very difficult because he was extremely grumpy. Uh, Joy went to work every day with her owner, my former son-in-law, and I found a great home for Gia, my one-eyed dragon. And so you've brought your animals to be recognized and loved by your community. And I am so excited that you have done this. So, I am so happy to have met all your animal friends. We get to know each other better when we meet those that bring us joy and that we love. And then we were supposed to do the plant blessing and then the congregational response. And then I was going to do the second part of the sermon. So now I'm going to do the second part of the sermon. <laughs> I'm really sorry, I got, I got very excited with your pets and forgot to follow my script. I obviously really like animals. So I just want to do a few minutes um, about with some serious work, and I know it's going to be really difficult with all the pets in here, but you know, I think we can do it. Um, so one of the things that we need to have is a piece of paper and a pen, and I was going to get Oksana to hand out the paper but I think she's busy, so if I could get a, if there's anyone here from the, uh, could grab some paper. Sylvia, yeah, if you don't mind helping. Um, so we're continuing to work on our mission, vision, and covenant. And last Sunday you were asked to bring your ideas of what our new covenant of right relations should look like, sound like, and feel like. And you did not disappoint. I've been so impressed with the excellent engagement during the process of, it's, as we work to shape our community, as our board says. I'd like to bring back to you some of the things that you said you thought were important to include in our new covenant. And your responses fell into four, main, four or five main categories. How to approach the process, wording for covenant, observations on working together, and individual roles in implementation of covenant. I'm going to list a few things that um, came from each one. And on the other side of our whiteboard, they're listed. And so we maybe will bring it out and turn it around and bring it um, over here. Or just turn it around so people can see. So. How to approach the process of creating a covenant. And you said we could embrace compassion and empathetic inquiring, willingness to be open and vulnerable, understanding open-mindedness, work through conflicts to deepen relationships, trust our ability to work through conflicts. And I think that's one of the big things, that having a covenant allows us to be able to be certain that we can work through a conflict and that means that we don't have to avoid it, which is what happens in organizations that don't have a covenant. So the wording from the covenant, for the covenant, keep it short and sweet. Allow people to be themselves, truth in conversations, having open and respectful dialogue with each other. Seek advice from the committees from the Committee on Ministry, and from the minister. Go directly to the right person to resolve the conflict. How to handle a two-person conflict. What to do when someone complains about something or someone in the church. Welcoming and honoring all people, no matter the race, belief, or sexuality. Inclusiveness, confidentiality. 
Observations on working together is the third broad category. And I think this one is really important. Impact is often different from intent. So we might not intend to harm. In fact, I doubt if anyone ever intends to harm. But we need the personal insight and awareness to know that and be open to the feedback that our intent has not been what's actually happened, how it's landed. Respect, joy, love, express appreciation, acknowledge who helps. And the last main category was individual roles in implementation of covenant. So don't presume, communicate directly, be friendly, talk openly, let the person know if what is shared is confidential. Don't assume. So you've thought really well about these things around the mission statement, the vision statement, and the covenant. And, and, and we, we've got kind of a lot of what the covenant needs to do, how, how the covenant is going to work. And so I'm very impressed with that. However, I'm going to ask you to do one more task, and you've got a little piece of paper there. We need to dig a little deeper and to have, to have a fulsome mission statement. We're kind of still missing some key points about what a mission statement is. It's really hard to separate out mission from vision. We want to think about, like, what are we, what are we going to be in, in, in the future? I love Lego. Carry on. Just don't step on it in bare feet. You'll be fine. So in order for our mission statement to really do a good job, to really reflect what we're doing, what we're actually doing, we need a bit more specific feedback from you. So I'd like you to answer this question on your piece of paper. So just listen for a moment, and then we will go do the exercise. So working in groups or on your own, so you can do it by yourself, you can make groups of two or three people, whatever you choose, and you can choose to not do anything. This is always, as I've mentioned many times, the request by invitation, not demand. You don't have to do a darn thing. So, what is the one thing this congregation can do to have the biggest impact? I'm gonna rephrase it a couple of times. What is the one action this congregation can do to begin to live into its mission? In essence, here's the question. Why does the Unitarian Church of Edmonton actually exist? Why are we here? What should we be doing? We talked a couple of times about the boots on the ground what is the work we need to do to fulfill, to live into who we should be? So who are we is basically the question. I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that. Um, I think you probably need a good five minutes. So make groups if you like. Are you... There we go. Um, make groups if you like of two or three. It might be helpful to discuss. Or if you'd like to work on your own, go ahead. I see all kinds of wheels turning. Are you preferring to work? Go ahead and make groups or work on your own. And I'll, I should just be quiet, shouldn't I? Let you work. Oh. Thank you. 
You've got a couple more minutes. I'm hoping the folks on Zoom are, are um, hosting in the chat. I'm sorry I forgot to invite you. Just saying hello. Put them on the piano, or somebody needs to play. Yes. Thirty seconds. Did you get a piece of paper, Gordon? Oops, that got your attention. Sorry, I didn't mean to make that so loud. So thank you so much for just participating. I know it was probably kind of hard to concentrate with all the animals around, but I'm sure you did great. We, uh, we on the, um, so the governance implementation team and myself are very grateful to you for providing this feedback to us. And we will be gathering with, um, a few other folks um, to come up with a draft mission vision statement on the 18th of this month. So if you have other things to add, uh, you can email them to myself, minister at uce.ca, or uh, to Louise Carrich, which 
I don't know where to email address. Uh, just email them to me, minister at uce.ca, and I will get them to Louise. Okay, how did everyone do? Are you happy? Did you have fun? That was fun. Thank you for everyone for bringing your pets. And so now let's close out our service by singing hymn number 203, All Creatures Great and Small. Please rise in body or spirit. invented his crimson throat. He is wiser than that, I think. A dog lives 15 years, if you're lucky. Do the cranes crying out in the high clouds think it is all their own music? 
A dog comes to you and lives with you in your own house, but you do not therefore own her, as you do not own the rain, the trees, or the laws which pertain to them. I wish to thank everyone that participated in the service, everyone that brought their pets. Intentionally, love unconditionally, and love extravagantly. The broken world waits in darkness for the light that is within you. So go in peace, my gentle people, go in peace. And I invite you to uh, form a circle if you like, or whatever you like to do. And we're going to sing our linking song, Carry the Flame, and the words will come up behind me, and they already have.